In this video I will talk about hardware. Hardware you need to play IL-2 Great Battles and hardware which is great to have and is improving your experience playing the game. It has to be said that most of the players don't buy all the stuff at once. Most players buy the hardware roughly in that order I will mention in a couple of minutes. That's at least how I did it. Playing flight sims can be awfully expensive, but at the same time you don't need to spend that much money right away and honestly you don't need everything to have fun. But naturally when people enjoy their hobbies with dedication there will be the desire to improve their experience and I think this video will describe that journey quite well. I personally upgraded my hardware continuously over 6 years, step by step. I can't give super detailed recommendations which hardware you should own to enjoy IL-2 Great Battles, but I think I can give you some ideas. Those ideas will allow you to buy the devices you need, or you can configure and adjust existing hardware to improve your experience. But keep in mind I will mention hardware names and brands in this video I have personal experience with. But there are many other hardware components which deserve your attention. This video is no ad or something like this. By the way, I'm not going into details about the core components of your PC. You need a somewhat recent gaming PC with a good CPU and GPU shouldn't be older than, I don't know, let's say 3 to 4 years or so. I think yeah, then you are really fine. Ideally a large screen, 24 inches and up with at least 1080p. But those are really just broad outlines. Again, no details here. It's a it's a really complicated topic since there are so many different hardware configurations around. Uh, one tip may be the minimum hardware recommendations on the official page are quite outdated and I don't think you will have any fun playing with a minimum recommendation. Technically, IL-2 can be played with mouse and keyboard. However, I would not recommend doing that for a couple of reasons. First, if you buy a simulator like IL-2, you usually want the stuff you do in front of the screen resembling the actions of the real pilot to some degree. For that a flight stick is needed. The flight stick emulates the movement the real pilot would do in his aircraft. If you use mouse control, the game translates the mouse movement with a script which in turn manipulates the aircraft's controls to comply with the input. This leads to a very indirect feel of flight. In IL-2 this allows you to fly single player and even multiplayer to some extent, but many servers ban this form of control since it brings some advantages over the joystick players. So at the very least, if you want to dive into IL-2 more seriously, and I mean just playing regular multiplayer, I recommend a joystick with some kind of throttle and twist axis. Doesn't have to be right away a complete HOTAS setup, hands on a throttle and stick, but uh, can be a built-in uh, throttle axis which is often at the base of the simpler joysticks. The twist axis is to control the rudder for, of the aircraft, the yaw axis. I think all the cheaper flight sticks offer those functionalities. The rest of the controls like camera and engine management can be controlled with your keyboard and mouse. I recommend this basic setup for players which are unsure if they like air combat simulation at all. The flight stick is enough to control the aircraft and to have some basic key assignments on the base of the joystick and to have fun flying around. Many players think that when they look at my personal hardware uh, that this is the reason why I fly quotation marks so good. Most of it it's practice. There are better pilots out there than me and they have much cheaper hardware overall. By the way, this is me in the background flying with just my joystick. I use no other peripherals other than the keyboard and mouse. I control the throttle here with my mouse wheel and the head movement with my mouse, which is in my left hand here. Single player, basic multiplayer missions or co-op should be no problem if competitiveness is of secondary concern. This is a great setup for someone who has just picked up one module of Great Battles and wants to experiment around. Uh, as this video was created, we are still very much affected by the pandemic. So many virtual pilots emerged and ruined, <laughs> yeah, there's no other way to say it, but ruined the budget market for flight sim hardware. 
Up until 2020, the Thrustmaster T16000M, which is a fantastic entry stick, was in Germany around 50 euros maybe. Now the price has skyrocketed and sticks, well, any hardware, is hard to obtain. I, it didn't help that the release of the M Microsoft Flight Simulator further increased the demand in flight sticks and hardware. Later, when you are sure that you want to stay with the flight sim community and want to fly more, I recommend more um, more expensive flight sticks. I personally can recommend VKB flight sticks. I'm currently flying with the Gladiator Mark II and have a blast, I have to say. But it's not manufactured and sold anymore, but the successor costs 50% more and is permanently out of stock at the moment. But I like this stick base of the Gladiator Mark II with all the buttons and all that. It's also easy to use in combination with VR, since the different buttons can be found with without actually seeing them. So now you have your stick and um, you flow in single player, you flow in multiplayer and you want more. In the next hardware upgrade from there should be some form of head tracking. Head tracking devices let you control the in-game camera with your head. This frees up one of your hands and you can control either control your aircraft or engine management while you are looking around. You can also look around objects more easily, like your headrest or something like this. You can turn your head, you can move your head forth and back, you can raise and lower it and you can look up and down. The immersion is much improved. There are a couple of solutions uh, in use and sold and the only solution I can't recommend is Natural Points Tracker R. Well, that's not entirely true. Uh, Tracker R is actually quite great and works wonderfully. I still own a Tracker R and I use it myself up until recently. But it's quality-wise not very impressive and costs in Germany right now 220 euros. And this is just ridiculous, I have to say. There's nothing, nothing more to say about it. I leave you a link to the IL-2 forums where my friend Black Hellhound explains how to set up a cheap head tracking solution and that is a perfect entry point. Um, he recommends uh, open track and uh, yeah, read the article and I think you can make a good decision after that. If you want to go all in and you have a very beefy PC, you can invest into VR since IL-2 Great Battle supports all kinds of VR headsets natively and the experience in VR is fantastic. I personally play with a HP Reverb G2 and have lots of fun. But first, VR is expensive, the goggles are expensive, not everyone likes it, you need to have a beefy PC and it requires some setup. I think I will put my personal experiences with VR in another video. The HP Reverb G2 is also my first VR headset, so I can't really compare it to others. However, I know the G2 has one of the highest resolutions uh, on the market. Hence why it's a good headset for flight simulations where you need that last bit of detail to spot tiny planes on the, at the horizon. So now you have a head tracking device or VR and, you, and the next logical hardware upgrade would be a throttle. I still use my Thrustmaster TWCS throttle and I'm still very happy with it. The rocker axis on the back of the um, of the throttle is not very accurate anymore and is worn out. But I don't use it as an axis, but I reconfigured it with a third-party software, Xpatter, to behave like two buttons, up and down. I use my zoom on that axis. There are plenty of other throttle hardware out there, but I wait personally for a worthy successor. Uh, most other solutions are way more expensive and not worth the upgrade as of now. The reason why a dedicated throttle is important is that you can manipulate your engine while you're using your throttle. You can basically use all kinds of buttons at the same time. I can manage my entire engine with my thumb for example. All critical engine controls are on my thumb buttons. I will discuss my personal key assignments in the next video for details. I know that VKB works on a very good throttle at the moment, I look forward to that. But the key point from this throttle chapter here is uh, that you should buy a throttle after you got your head tracking so you can manipulate your engine uh, more efficiently and you are, in the end, is also more immersive. In my opinion, the last thing you should think about are rudder pedals. Like the name suggests, they are to control the rudder axis of the aircraft 
and uh, this in turn controls the aircraft's yaw axis. Without pedals you control the rudder usually with the flight stick's twist axis. Rudder pedals are relatively expensive and are comparatively speaking to head tracking and throttle not that important to your all to your uh, performance and your competitiveness. However, they do their bit and have their value. You will now use your entire body to fly the aircraft like a real pilot would do and this makes your aiming cleaner since you don't have to use that twist while you are maneuvering the aircraft. I still use my MFG crosswind rudder pedals. I have them in September for 5 years. And they fulfilled exactly that what I wanted from them. I paid around 300 euros on them and they are still indestructible. I had to swap out the electronic controller recently, that cost me 50 euros, but in the end the pedals are now like 4000 hours old and are still rocking. If I would have bought cheaper rudder pedals, I'm pretty sure they would have broken like twice by now. But this is, um, but in my opinion, those hardware components are the four components you want to buy to get into flight sims at some point. Of course, there are many, many other possibilities to buy hardware for flight sims. Uh, the hobby can be quite expensive, but I don't think that. Um, after this, your performance will improve with better hardware that much. We can get, of course, more and more to get a better experience or a more immersive experience. But I think if you have a good joystick, a good throttle and good rudder pedals you, and a good head tracking device, you are really fine. In the next video, we will see how I assign my buttons to the different devices. Our key focus will be on ergonomics, so we can reach all the different buttons uh, in flight without actually looking down on our keyboard or uh, on our stick and throttle. See you in the next one.